The gunman in the Copenhagen terror attack, well known to police, a 22-year-old who had a lengthy criminal past, and police at this point believe that he worked alone. His motive? Frankly, we don't know. But they are saying that he could have possibly been inspired by the recent terror attacks in Paris at the offices of the satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo. Now, police killed the shooter after a deadly shootout near a synagogue in Copenhagen. His name has not yet been released. We do not know if the shooter had any links to jihadists. But Denmark has one of the highest number of jihadis per capita in Europe. And they've, they're using a very unique program to try to deal with any jihadists returning home to Denmark. They offer what is known as a jihadi rehab program. Now, the candidates are screened by police. If they committed a crime, they go to court and possibly to prison. But if they pass a screening test and they want help, they can get it. Help with getting a job, help with housing, also psychological counseling. And the program doesn't try to change their fundamentalist beliefs as long as they don't advocate violence. The police chief in Denmark's second largest city explains why the program appears to be working. This is not a gift shop. Uh, you have to be motivated. Uh, you have to really want to become a part of the Danish society. We help them find a way uh, through the system. And what we've seen is that out of these 16 who have returned, 10 of them are now back in school, uh, have a job. And it seems to us that their focus is on, s on something else than in Syria. They are still uh, Muslim believers, some of them in perhaps a way that we would call radical. Uh, but not to an extent that so, as far as we can see, uh, they are a threat to the society. So let me bring in Mayor Jakob Bunchkor in Aarhus, Denmark. Thank you for joining me. I was fascinated reading about this program, sir, uh, that frankly it sounds like you guys have deemed successful thus far. Um, and it says even if they remain radical, we don't try to take that away from them as long as they are not being violent. Given the attack we saw play out yesterday, do you believe that that will at all change support for this program? No, I believe that we need to both have the hard measures where we prosecute uh, if anyone has committed a crime and, and prosecute them to the full length of, of the law. But we also need the soft measures. Uh, if they have legal residence in, in Aarhus and in Denmark, we need to, to do our utmost to reintegrate them into society because they have a, a legal right to be here. Tell me a little bit about why you think the program has been effective. What the steps are that are taken? Well, first of all, we make it very clear to, to these uh, typically uh, quite young people that if we uh, find out that they have committed a crime, they will be prosecuted. But uh, other than that, that we try to, to uh, motivate them to, uh, to go into education or get a job uh, and make sure that they can focus on other things than uh, a path where they have uh, become radicalized. Uh, and we need to, to break that path uh, and give them a, a more positive alternative. So that they don't feel disenfranchised, right? Because oftentimes that can be, at least in part, a motivator for things like this. Exactly. Uh, they need to, to have... Uh, their, uh, their values uh, challenged, uh, and we need to, to make sure that they know that uh, there is a society that if they choose uh, the right path, we will support them and, and we will make sure that they can be reintegrated into society uh, through education, through, uh, mm. through job, uh, housing, uh, and, and help uh, for, for them to, to be uh, an active and positive part of society. President Obama has invited you to this White House summit uh, midweek that is all focused on countering violent extremism. I wonder, are, are you planning to attend? And if so, what are you planning to say, especially in the wake of this attack? Well, I'm, I'm planning to, uh, to attend uh, the, the, the White House summit. Uh, and uh, my message will, will be that uh, we need to, uh, to make uh, everything, uh, all our efforts uh, possible to unite local communities because this is uh, an issue that can only be solved if uh, the whole community stands together. Uh, support uh, these young people in, in uh, reintegration uh, into society, but also uh, we need to focus on, on the harder measures and, and make sure that uh, that, that is, is also in place. Mayor, do you believe, uh, from someone on the ground who is such a part of this community, do you believe that we are seeing a dangerous sea change 
in Europe following the attacks uh, in Paris and now this attack in your city? Uh, this is a, a threat uh, in, in many countries all across the world. Uh, and it, it's, it's a risk that we need to, to deal with uh, and we need to stand together. We need to, to share the knowledge of, of the different programs that is uh, uh, under development uh, all across the world and, and make sure that, that, that we uh, use all the, our resources and all our efforts in, in combating uh, this, uh, this issue. This won't go away. Uh, overnight, but we can actually do something about it, and that's uh, very important. Mayor, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so sorry uh, for the people of Denmark that they have had to go through this attack yesterday. Wishing you all the best. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.